Uh, uh, we, I think we might be live. I think we might be live. Early bird gang. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Let me make sure I've got everything everywhere good. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Darren. Hello, Medicine Sky Feathers. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Um, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Um, hopefully everything's good. I kind of had to, <laughs> it's been a while since I've gone live, so I had to kind of, you know, rig things together and make sure everything was all good. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so we are going to be planning, planning my bo -Katan cosplay <laughs> that I've already made. <laughs> This is actually, like, I actually wanted to make a video whenever I was planning this for real. Like, I don't even remember when I started planning it, but I just, I, I forgot. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to say I forgot. I just, I didn't want to film myself actually writing in a notebook and all that stuff because it was just all over the place. So maybe this will um, kind of satiate all of that. <laughs> Sorry to scare you, Almatech. I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So the audio is all good and everything. That's great. So this is going to be a pretty, like, low-key kind of a thing. Um, I'm, I really want to workshop what my panel is going to be about. So, okay, let me actually, you know, actually introduce and in what the heck this is about. So um, I am going to be a cosplay guest cosplay guest at Fan Expo Cleveland in about two weeks. And I have a panel that's actually called Break It Down, Breaking It Down B Without the Breakdown, which I didn't come up with that title. That was the title that the program coordinators gave me. And I love it. I'm going to steal it for a YouTube video, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so I just kind of, I, I want to kind of break down what the panel is going to be about and kind of just go through my planning process of everything. And just to kind of get this out of the way, I just want to let you guys know that there are no, like, I don't have any alerts or anything like, you know, fun things like, oh, you followed or you did, um, you like donated or something. So if you were going to do that during this, like, please, please don't. <laughs> um, cause I won't get, like, I won't get a notification that you did it. So I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you. I just don't have them on because they distract me. So <laughs> Hopefully that's good for you guys. So let me check on the chat really quick. What time is it? Oh, it's only 5.01. I feel like I've been in here for a while already. Goodness. Oh, thank you so much, Spider Addison. I appreciate that. Steely. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be something that comes out of me doing this uh, live that I can like edit down into a video. That would be awesome because making videos has been a lot of fun lately. <laughs> By a lot of fun, I mean it's been not. Oh, give me one second. I need to take, I need to take my ibuprofen because I need a root canal. <laughs> I'm getting my root canal after PAX East or after Cleveland. So it's all right. I will, I will live. So, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make myself smaller. So actually, let's see. Let's see how small I can get. Let's see how small I can get. Where did I go? I'm in the X bar. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna done. I'm gonna stop screwing her. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I do whenever I play video games. I just mess around with like the boxes and stuff. All right. Let's get rid of that and get situated. Okay. So I. Dennis, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. You do not need to do that, <laughs> but thank you. Um, so I know that I put out a video um, last year about my Liara to Sony build of how to create like a cosplay breakdown and how to start planning for a cosplay. So if any of this stuff kind of sounds familiar, that is probably where it's coming from. So let me get into this. Um, oh, okay, so I am actually in, right now I'm in, it's a program called Notion. I've mentioned it before. It's basically like you can make like a personal database of stuff. So here's kind of like all my all my stuff over here. Um, there's a lot of other a lot of other fun stuff you can do with it, and it's kind of where I throw all of my ideas, and it's just all in one place. And I can kind of you can use it like on your phone and stuff like that. But you can totally do all of this like just in a Word document. Um, so uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. all right, so. Whenever it comes to planning a cosplay, 
I would say that the first thing that you need to do is have a character in mind to cosplay. <laughs> so we're going to kind of go through this as if you already have that in mind, because that to me is a very personal question. I cannot answer what you want to cosplay. It's really kind of, you're, you're going to know when there's a character that you want to cosplay or there's like a set of armor that you want to cosplay. For me, if it's like, if there's something lime green, I'm probably going to cosplay it. Um, <laughs> if it's a, you know, a Star Wars character that has a helmet on with no visor, like you just see their eyes, probably going to cosplay it because that's basically what I've done for the past couple years in Star Wars. And in my case, uh, last year, whenever Bo-Katan, spoilers, if anyone hasn't seen Mandalorian season two, um, she uh, finally showed up in live action in season two. So so we're going to be doing this whole uh, breakdown of Bo-Katan based on her live action armor that I have already created. So <laughs> it's kind of like a retrospective planning. But so I would always say like the first thing that you need, obviously, is a character to cosplay. So make sure you've got your character, pick character. And I apologize if my keyboard is super loud. Um, I'm a pro gamer and I have a, I don't even remember what these are called, what kind of keyboard these are. Oh, pro gamer move. I don't know, it's just a loud keyboard. <laughs> um, but so the, okay, so first thing, you're gonna wanna have a character that you wanna actually cosplay. The second question that I would ask is what do you want to wear? Like what, where do you want to wear this costume? What do you want to wear this costume for? So for example, what is there a convention that you're looking to get this done for? So for example, um, I'll just pick a convention out of the top of my head. Um, Dragon Con is in September, I believe of this year and it's April 14th. So let's say you decide you want to make a bo -Katan cosplay for Dragon Con. So now we have an end date that we can kind of, oh, what is the word? We have an end date that we can work back from in order to do a lot of our time management stuff later. So I always like to tell people it's great that it, and okay, and, and another thing is, is you don't have to, you don't have to be wanting to make a cosplay for anything. Like it could literally just be for you to make, like if you just want to make it for that experience um, or you just want to kind of take pictures in your house. So don't feel like you have to have a reason to have a costume or to make it. I just like to tell, I just like to ask people, like try to think of why you want to wear this or where you want to wear this just so you have sort of a time a reference of time that you're going to have in order to make this because if you don't really have any frame of reference or frame of time you're going to take all of the time to do it if if that makes sense all right so two is like decide where and what it is for and some other examples um that I would, that I would talk about. Some people only, some people only want to wear a costume for a photo shoot. So this could be like a very elaborate costume. I'm trying to think of a very good, I'm trying to think of something that would be like super hard to like walk around a convention in. Oh, so like maybe you wanted to be like a space marine from Warhammer 40k. Like they're huge, these huge armor things. They're larger than life, and that's probably going to be a photo shoot costume if you are planning it that way, because it's just such a honking big thing, you can plan it as a cosplay or a cosplay, a convention cosplay, but you kind of have to approach your build with that in mind, knowing that you're gonna be walking around a convention all day, if that makes sense. And then the third one I actually have on here um, has been kind of relevant with, I, I get a lot of questions about this kind of stuff. And you may be wanting to make a costume purely for TikTok. Like you may purely want to make it for like Instagram reels and that's totally valid. And in that case, you basically only need to worry about like from, you know, your, what's, what is this called? <laughs> I'm going to have a couple brain farts in this. Um, oh my goodness. Like from your torso up basically is all you need to make up the costume. So that I, I just always like to say, try to think of where you want to wear this costume, who you want to wear it with, if there's people that you want to wear it with as well. So they're just things to like kind of keep in mind whenever you're building the costume. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Let's see what else I got written down. Oh, and then another um, another thing, the third question that I would ask, and I don't know how to really word this correctly, so maybe you guys in chat can help me. 
Um, I personally like to tell people whenever you're working on it, whenever you're deciding on a cosplay, try to settle on like a rough budget. Um, you're, if this is your first costume, you, you're probably going to be opened up to like a lot of money being spent. Um, so it's, it's hard to kind of budget whenever you don't know all of the ins and outs and all of the supply costs and stuff like that. But it is still very important for you to have a budget in mind. I'm not going to go into that too much in this because that's a whole other topic. I could make a whole other video about that. But try to figure out like, okay, am I going to be spending like $100 here? And that would kind of influence how you're going to plan things further down the line. Or are you like, I'm going to, I, I want to be 501st, you know, CRL approved, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's a whole different type of planning. That's a whole different type of, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. It's going to be a lot of money is all I'm going to tell you. So that, um, I always like to tell people, try to have some kind of frame of reference of how much you want to spend on this costume, because if you don't, you're going to end up spending just, you're just going to end up spending a ton of money. And then another thing to go along with that is try and, and this is the thing that I'm having a little bit of trouble wording. Try to think of what type of level of accuracy you want to go with your costume. And I don't necessarily mean accuracy in in like the, the terms that we're thinking. I'm more so talking about, do you, how, how can I phrase this right? I, it's more, it, it's kind of along the lines of, are you going for some type of Legion, like 501st Star Wars Club approval? Or are you okay with say like thrifting and, you know, for example, with my Bo-Katan costume, I still don't have a jetpack. I'm I am perfectly comfortable with not having a jetpack because that's not something that you necessarily see from the front. Um, and you can kind of see that. Uh, yes, that that's a very good way to put it. Um, so like the this is something I'll get into later, but like the five foot roll. Um, are you comfortable with your costume looking OK like from a distance or are you going to be the type of person that's I need every single stitch I need every single like seam absolutely perfect so it, it's kind of good to have like a frame of reference there too because again this is going to be very important down the line of how much time you're going to be spending so let me put three there um rough budget and I'm just gonna put five foot roll here for now but yeah, so those are the those are the three things that I would say before you even start getting planning. Try to get like and again, th these answers for these three questions don't have to be set in stone. Like you once you've done some research, you can obviously come back and, you know, rectify them if you need to. Um, do, 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 let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great way to put it, um, Nate. Uh, how screen accurate are we shooting for? So I. Uh, I, I just am very good with it. I, I've learned better with examples. So with me, uh, with my gin, my Imperial Jin or so costume, I wanted that to be screen accurate. I love that character. I just wanted it to be as screen accurate as I possibly could. So that's where my head was at. And I was searching for screen accurate items. However, whereas some other person may be like, oh, I'm totally fine with just wearing like a normal, you know, getting a normal pair of brown boots. I don't need to get the fry. Oh, goodness. I can't even remember the... I can't remember the actual name of them, but th they, they don't necessarily care about getting the actual screen used item on the show or in the movie. They are totally fine, like, with a dupe. So that kind of a thing. Let me see. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So those are the first three things, and I, I believe that I covered those kind of... I think I covered those in a previous video. But those are the three things that I would ask yourself before you even get into the actual planning. So let's actually get into the actual planning of the costume. So I think everyone knows what the first, like what your first step would be whenever you are going to be planning a costume. And that is to just go absolutely ham and get as many reference photos as you possibly can of the costume. So for example, whenever Bo Katan came out, let's, I, I hope that we don't have any, you know, naughty photos in here. Some that's another thing. Sometimes when you're searching for photos, you might uh 
might have some bad stuff in there, but I think I, I think all my stuff is good. But <laughs> so the first thing I would just say, Google is your friend. Look look for as many photos as you possibly can on Google first. Um, like here we've got, you know, this I, I <laughs> this is like a standee that I've seen people buy. They actually like bought it. Like you don't have to actually buy this standee to, you know, get the level of detail. You can just take the picture, but I know that there's some people that did that. So I'll do that. But yeah, I I think that goes without saying. We we all just kind of we have just folders full of reference photos of just things that you would never think you would need a reference photo for. <laughs> like I have so many photos of like her uh, bows, like like the back of her helmet and all this stuff. So I think we all know about that. And then so. I would look, I would first go out to Google, look for any type of reference photos that you can possibly find for your character. We all know that. Then if you're not finding what you're looking for, you can go to, like for me, I could go on Disney Plus. Hopefully I'm not going to get flagged for being on Disney Plus on a stream, but uh, where is it? There we go. Boba Fett or Mandalorian. Oh my goodness. Hey, look, I was, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> See, I was looking at this recently. <laughs> I was trying to get like an exact photo of her somewhere. Um, but yeah, I would just pull up Disney Plus. I would pull up um, if you're cosplaying from a video game. A lot of video games have photo mode now, which is amazing. You go into photo mode, snap a ton of photos of just absolutely everything. Get as many pictures as you can. Um, and yeah, so I'm not I'm not going to take any screenshots in here because I don't want Disney to get mad at me. Um, I'm just using them for my cosplay purposes, I promise. <laughs> but the uh, first thing, uh, da, 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 what did I, see, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to have some of these, these just brain farts. What did I just say? <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I recently got diagnosed with ADHD and this is, far, this is part of it. <laughs> Get reference photos. <laughs> oh my Lord. Okay, and one thing, oh, let me look at the chat really quick. That, okay, that is a very good, oh, you can't see it. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't know that it blocked it. Um, that is a good, that is a good point as well. You can, if you, if you don't have access to like really good screenshots or if you don't have Disney Plus or something like that, there, you, I would, I would look on Facebook. Facebook groups are great. They can be overwhelming. Um, but I would search on Facebook for whatever costume you're looking for. I know that there are like, there's like three Bo-Katan groups on Facebook. Um, I do just say like kind of, kind of proceed with caution with those groups because they can get very overwhelming. Um, I know that I know from my own personal uh, experience with the Bo-Katan groups, I got very overwhelmed by people color matching the armor and it just was it it was just a lot for me and I couldn't I, I I got some I got some good you know advice from that group but it was just a lot of people arguing about paint colors and I was, so just take it with a grain of salt in those groups but they are very helpful um, let me see over here oh yeah that's right geek building um there are like there are specific um websites out there that just take screenshots of movies so basically what I'm getting at is Google the crap out of this costume. Um, if it's only been, so uh, kind of going back to Bo-Katan again, uh, after the first episode aired, uh, season three or episode three aired, um, we had a good idea of what the costume looked like, but we didn't have everything. So we kind of had to wait until I forget, like the second to last in the last episode to get like more accurate things, um, more accurate Met more accurate screenshots <laughs> and oh excuse me god <laughs> here we go again brain fart but yeah um oh one other thing i did want to mention so that's great if we have reference photos for something like most people do but what happens if we don't have reference photos so can you still cosplay? Like, you can't. Um, so a good example of a character that I've cosplayed in the past, and let me see if I can pull it up. 
uh, what was the name of that? I'm on my desktop PC, so I don't have a lot of my actual like cosplay photos on here, so pardon me. So this specific armor I made, this is the alloy armor that I made. Okay, of course it's not gonna show for you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Move. Okay, let me move my move my I'll move my head. All right, I'm over here now. I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be here. <laughs> Um, so I made, do, 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 where is it? Where did it go? Okay. So whenever I was working on my Aloy costume, this specific costume is a pre-order bonus only, I think in the game. And you like, that's the only way you could get it. You had to pre-order the game, which we didn't pre-order the game. And of course I fell in love with this armor set. This at the time was the only reference photo that I had. So I kind of had to make a judgment call on my end and I basically took this and kind of ran with it. So I kind of did my own thing in, in places and kind of just did a lot of, I, I was able to get a lot, I was able to get pretty creative with it. So it's one of those things if you, if whatever you want to cosplay doesn't have a lot of reference material or it could even be like your original character or something like that from D&D, &D, um, you really, that's kind of, you kind of have like the world in front of you. Like the world is your oyster at that point, I would say. And I had a lot of fun with this specific costume. And I think it was a lot to do with the fact that I didn't have a lot of screenshots. I kind of just could do whatever I want. And I was like, okay, cool. It's fine. Um, so as long as you're okay with that, I would say as long as you're okay with cosplaying a character that doesn't have a lot of reference photos. Um, I, I know that some people they aren't comfortable working on a costume until they get more reference photos so it's just some it's just something to keep in mind okay let me put myself back in the corner put me back in the corner oh yeah animated characters really are a hot topic i i wholeheartedly know exactly what you're talking about oh my goodness people talking about uh season seven bo -Katan. i'm getting PTSD from it. Oh, I gotta do that little. Yes. All right. So we've got all of our reference photos. Now what we need to do is actually break down this costume. So let me get that costume into, or not that costume, get that photo in here. Now, ideally you would have a where is it? Where, okay. <laughs> I was like, I know I can put an image in here. Uh, da, 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 where is that image? Okay. So, ideally, you would want a full body. Let me make this a little bit bigger so I can see. So, ideally, ideally you would want a full body photo of what you've got going full body front and back. Um, obviously you can have more than that, but for these purposes, I'm for the purpose of like this whole breakdown, I'm just going to have this one, this one singular thing right here. And let me, sorry guys, my computer or my window is a little bit too small. I need to make it bigger. Do, do, do. All right. Can I make this next to you? I want to like, I don't want it like down below. <laughs> How do you do that? All right. Well, <laughs> we're just going we're just going to play with it this way. So, whenever you're looking at your costume or whenever you're looking at your character, I know I personally whenever I look at Katie Sackoff, all I see I see a ton of stuff. I see so many things that I need to do. I see sewing, I see leather work, I see armor work, I see painting, I see, you know, I see a lot. I see wig styling, there's a lot to go on here. So, what I like to do to kind of quell that overwhelm and that kind of anxiety I've got just looking at this is to just go either from top, like from head to toe, toe to up. You can go either way and just literally break down every single thing that's going on here. And the beauty of this is that you don't have to really know how to do anything yet because we will build that in later. So for example, First thing we see, we've got red hair. I don't have red hair, so I'm going to need a wig. And let's see, 
And that is also, this is also an, a, a point where you can be like, all right, I don't think I want to wear a wig. I will just wear the helmet. So you could completely take that off. But I would recommend going through the entire costume, writing down every single thing. And a little bit later on, I'll talk about like kind of trimming things if, and kind of like keeping, you know, time on your side. So we would need a wig. We would need a headband. And if you want to, you can even go as far as saying, I'm going to need some type of makeup. Like I'm going to need makeup. I need to figure out how to become a Katie Sackoff or a Bo-Katan. All right, so and then right under that, I'm, uh, what What technically is here? I'm just gonna go with these, neck, these, uh, these two things here. These are technically the, oh goodness, the shoulder, I, I've been calling these neck pieces, but these pieces of armor here are technically attached to the jetpack. So I'm just going to put neck armor for now. And then I'm just going to do shoulder armor because that's right there. And then the chest armor. And then I'm just going to complete, I'm just going to put flight suit and vest because as you can see under here, she's got a fancy little flight suit that we were we are either going to sew or we're going to have to resource and figure out how we're going to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I just saw Rex and Around repainting Kicks Armor <laughs> Testy. Yeah, you know, I relate to Rex and Around a lot in the way that he crafts. I'm like, I, I, I chaotically craft a lot myself. <laughs> All right, so where were we? Okay, we got the flight suit and vest. I uh, already got the chest armor. Uh, do, 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 let's do gauntlets. And then gloves. And then there also is a little piece of armor on her gloves. So I'll put glove armor. And then I am going to go back up to the wig area and headband and also put helmet and it's funny to just type out helmet because i know that that is so many steps of stuff to do <laughs> but that's the beauty of doing a breakdown it's like it's very simple right now i have this in my control now all right so we've got the belt and this belt in itself is you could break this down oh, well we are going to break it down what am i talking about guys what am i talking about and then we've also got this, I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> that piece of ab, would you call that ab armor? <laughs> I'm just gonna call it ab armor. I know your abs aren't there, but whatever. Is it, is it? oh God, what are they called? Oh my goodness. It'll come to me. And then, okay, so we've got gauntlets, gloves, do. do. And okay, so it's hard to see, but there is a piece of armor underneath the holster. Uh, I'm just gonna call it holster armor. Not correct, I don't care though. Okay, and then, okay, so belt. Okay, that, that's why I was confused. I was like, I don't think I wrote down the holster. Belt, holster, same thing. Not really, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And um, then we also have the uh, guns in here, the blasters. And then going further down, we've got the knee, knee armor. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Mm, excuse me. Then the shin armor right there. And it's tough to see in these pictures, and that's why you should have multiple reference photos, but there are like, they're called spats, like boot covers underneath the boots. So I'm going to put boot covers and boots. Now I'm not planning on making boots, but we, we still need to source boots. <laughs> so you have, you know, shoes to wear at the convention because don't go to a convention without shoes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Okay. All right. So now that we've got this nice little list of everything. Now this, this could look overwhelming to you already. And that's okay because 
cosplay is overwhelming. But the again, the beauty of all of this is that we're going to take all of these things and we're going to break them down even further so that you know every single step of how to get get like this chest armor on your body, basically. So the first thing that I would do with this list is all right, so da, da, da. Okay, so everything is basically grouped almost. Let me see. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go in it without shoes, but <laughs> I don't know if people are going to be okay with that. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> I'm only going to do this for a couple, for like one piece or for one like piece of the armor. And I'm trying to decide which one to do it for to like break it down further, which one would be the best example. Um, <clears throat> maybe, let's go with the helmet. All right, so you've got all of these singular, so you've got all of these singular pieces um, called out on your, like what you're looking for, what costume you're looking for. So we've got, we're just going to focus on the helmet for now. So let's say that you have no idea what to do. You are a complete newbie. You have, you, you just know that you want to have that helmet and you want to wear it somewhere. What I would, what I would do is the first thing that I tell everyone, Google is your friend, YouTube is your friend. I would first go to, probably YouTube would be my first bet, would go to YouTube, look up how to, how to make a Bo-Katan helmet, how to, or you could even look, I know that there is a Bo-Katan helmet. Um, I know Black Series is coming out with one that you could purchase. You could go to Etsy. You could see if you, th there's so many different ways you could go about this. You could, the, the easiest way would be if you want to commission someone, you could just go to Etsy and commission someone to make you the helmet. But I'm going to approach this as, I'm going to approach this as you want to make it in some fashion. <clears throat> so again, my first recommendation, go to YouTube, go to Google, um, I don't think I really need to tell you that, but it it's there. Um, so look up tutorials on the YouTube or Google. And, oh, what are you doing? No, don't connect to something. What is this? Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you to look up tutorials on YouTube and then be like, okay, now, now you know how to make your costume. That's no, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm, t I'm more so saying look up tutorials on YouTube, look up materials that you think you might want to work with. And this is where you kind of need to decide, okay, do I, like, for example, this is kind of where you need to decide, okay, am I going to make this armor out of like cardboard? I'm going to be make this out of EVA foam. Um, Again, uh, this isn't really going to be a discussion over deciding what you want to do. It's more so figuring out what you want to do and then putting those, you know, putting that into motion. Sorry if I'm like popping really bad on this microphone. I keep leaning into it too much. So, for example, I, I 3D printed my personal helmet. So, the first thing that I did, well, I... I know how to I know how to 3D print that helmet, but let's say that you don't know how to do that. Go to YouTube, look up a tutorial on it. Um, if you have a 3D printer, then you would be able to discern. Okay, I need to get a file. I need to find an STL file from a maker that I like, and I need to find an STL file, and then you would then need to print said file. And again, this is a very loaded task right here. <laughs> that in itself is going to be like a three, three day, four day task, de depending on how long the helmet takes. So for this example of me breaking things down, I'm going to approach this as you are going to be 3D printing this helmet for your costume. So we've got print said file, find STL, and I promise I will break down the times of all this stuff later. So we got print said file. So whenever that helmet is complete, we know now, all right, we need to actually get rid of all those layer lines. Um, in, in my case, I print FDM, you know, I, I print uh, PLA, so I got to get rid of all those layer lines. So I'm going to have to do some sanding. <laughs> 
and filler primer. And again, these are two very loaded tasks. These, it's one task, but it is this, this is like gonna be something you're going to be doing multiple times to get it to a finish that you like. So, and this is all, all of these, all of this knowledge that I'm uh, outlining here, this is where the tutorials that you were looking up comes into play. So again, your list of to-dos may look a little bit different than mine. If you choose to use like cardboard, you choose to use EVA foam, it's gonna be a different steps for that. So just try to, with this, with this, like what I'm going through, just understand that we're literally just breaking down the steps right now of whatever you want to do. So once we've got sanding, filler primer, I'm trying to even remember, okay. So after all that sanding and filler priming, I would say one last step is going to be wet sanding, which is, you could just say that that's another level of sanding. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then once the wet sanding is done, we have got, let's see, oh goodness. After the wet sanding, what did I do? Uh, yeah, sand fill, sand, yeah, so basically that's, yeah. So wet sanding, I can't even, I'm trying to remember what I did. Okay, so I think after, yeah, after wet sanding, I painted, I did a base layer of paint. I did a paint, uh, I think it was like chrome or silver paint. And then <clears throat> after that, it was basically layers. Uh, it was doing a lot of masking layers on my paint, on my helmet, I mean. Let me see. So, uh, and again, this is where looking up tutorials and asking questions. Oh, that's something, sorry, that's something I wanted to touch on um, with the tutorials. You can wet sand Bondo. I, um, I forget who showed me that, but you can wet sand Bondo. And I wish I would have known that sooner because <laughs> I have made a lot of messes in my garage with not wet sanding it. But yeah, you can totally do that. Um, oh goodness. What was I going to talk about? What was I going to say? I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, it'll come back to me. All right. It'll come back. Um, so we've got the chrome and silver paint on the base of the helmet. And then <clears throat> after that, I know that I needed to do, so with Bo-Katan's helmet, she has some weathering and I had to, um, I use latex to do some latex masking to keep the chrome base layer on and so that it would kind of show through all the other things. So with that, I'm going to put latex masking and then on top of the latex, I believe I did, I think I did blue. Blue paint layer, and then white oops, paint layer. And actually there was a, there's like a darker blue on the back of her helmet that I haven't shown you guys, but yeah, there's like a darker blue layer, white paint layer. And then the, um, for the, oh goodness, what are these called? Allies. <laughs> the allies on the front, I decided to make a painter's tape stencil of it. So I, I used a, that is make, make stencil for eyes. Clear coating? Do you mean after like you're finished with it? Uh, make stencil for, I'm um, sorry. I'm like jumping all around guys. Make stencil for allies and then paint the gray portion of allies, paint black portion. And the reason I have these set as two tasks is because I personally was using spray paint. If you are using, if you were using something like just hand, you know, hand brushes, you could probably do both of these at the same time. All right. So we got paint gray, paint black, do do do. Um, oh, okay. And then after that, <laughs> remove latex masking. <laughs> then after that, I believe, it feels like there's more than I needed to do. <laughs> 
latex. You know what? I've, I actually ran out of latex medium and I ended up using toothpaste and it actually did work really well. And I really, I, if I would have known that mustard worked as well, then I probably would have just ended up using that because the toothpaste, I ended up using like our good toothpaste and I got yelled at. Okay. So remove the latex masking and then let's see. Okay. Okay. And then also we need to make sure that the, so I'm talking mostly about the, 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 I guess the actual body of the helmet and we also need to worry about the ear caps as well as the rangefinder. So we just need to make sure we've got the ear caps painted silver. It's a pretty easy paint job on these. And again, this is kind of, this is where it goes back to asking yourself how accurate do you really want to be? Because with the rangefinder, if you really wanted to, you could uh, I know that the rangefinder actually has like you, I think you can put LEDs in it. You you could really get fancy with that, but I didn't do that. I just ended up painting my rangefinder silver. Um, paint rangefinder silver, and I think the actual like top thing was gray. These are really great notes. I, I know that, and so that's. And then after that, I would say uh, we need a clear coat. Whoops, clear coat helmet. And then after that, I think we're pretty much set to install, like we would need to get a visor, source visor material, and helmet padding. And I believe that that is it um, in terms of what I did for this specific helmet. If I, if you think I missed a step in there, I might have. Um, so... This is all, all of the, the, the reason I knew all of how to plan all of this is, well, one, I did it. <laughs> and two, um, you kind of, whenever you're looking at this helmet, um, I kind of want to grab a better picture because you guys are looking at just a really tiny thing. Let me see if I can grab one. And this is something that you'll... The more you like actually look at costumes, the better you'll get at this kind of stuff. So let me see. Oh, I don't want, I don't want Clone Wars. I guess I could just get the Black Series one, huh? It's not that deep. It's not that deep, Robin. You can just, that's not a good picture either. Oh my God. All right, I'm just going to use the Black Series thing. <laughs> I'm going to just do this. All right, okay, that's way too large. Okay, so <clears throat> the way that it, it's very, you kind of have to look at this helmet backwards in a sense. So the reason that I knew how to, like where to start with painting is, so I see all of the, I see all of the scratches on here. I see all of the gray scratches and you know that you're going to want to have a base of, silver or some type of chrome so that you can have all that weathering underneath if that's the way you want to go about it. So with, with Bo-Katan specific helmet, that's kind of how the weathering was done. It's done from like the bottom up, so to say. Um, sometimes you might see people weathering their stuff like just by painting on silver on top and that's totally fine too, but this is actually kind of easier in a way. So whenever I'm looking at this helmet, I'm trying to build it up from like I'm trying to build it up backwards, if you know what I'm saying. So a good way to look at it, so a good way to kind of practice doing this is you can like look at what you see first on this helmet. So probably everyone sees the allies first and they see like the arrows on the top of the head and you can write the, <clears throat> write everything on the helmet in that type of order. So it's, and you'll kind of find it, you'll kind of find that it looks like this list but in reverse. So you would, you see those allies first and it's like, oh, okay, well, here's the allies. I'm going to, I'm going to paint those. And it's, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. It's like the further, it's the furthest most thing that's on the helmet. And you kind of know that that's like one of the last things that you're going to be doing. And this is another side tangent, but there's a lot of ways that you can paint, you know, you can paint, um, 
Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I'm brain farting tonight. You can, there's a lot of ways to get markings like that on your helmet. And again, this is where the YouTube Googling kind of stuff is going to come into play. And oh, I remember what I was going to say earlier. Um, do not be afraid. That's okay. Thank you for stopping at the end. I appreciate it. Um, the, one of the most important things that you can learn <clears throat> as somebody who wants to get into cosplay and making your own costumes, learn to ask good questions. And what I mean by that. So an example of a, I would say a bad question, and please don't feel like, please don't feel like this is targeting anyone because it's not. This is, we've all experienced questions like this. A bad question to ask a cosplayer if you really can't figure out how to do something. And let me, hold on, let me back it up. I gotta back up the train. All right. Let's say whenever you went to go look up a tutorial on a spe specific thing that you want to build and you want to work on and you can't find anything, you don't know where to look. I'm trying to think of a specific example, but we'll just pretend that for whatever reason, nobody knows how to make this Bo-Katan helmet. If you see a cosplayer or if you see some a prop maker making that, you are more than welcome to ask them how they did it. The thing is, is that you really should approach it with a good question. <laughs> so for example, I would not, uh, an example of a bad question to me would be asking me, how did you make your helmet? That is a very loaded question as we see here. That That is why I make a lot of tutorials on YouTube now because it's just a lot easier to kind of show you the that kind of process. So that's an example of a bad question. And again, not this is not targeted at anybody. We've all asked questions like that. Um, the best way of, like, I don't wanna say guaranteeing your response because that's another thing is don't, don't be upset if a cosplayer does not get back to you and doesn't, you know, help you out in some way because they're also under no obligation to either. But I, I try to help as much as I possibly can. But a good question to ask would be, um, what, what STL file are you using? Like, what is the helmet base that you're using? What paint colors are you, did you use for bow? Um, so, some, those type of questions. So the, don't, I wouldn't, recommend asking very broad questions. Um, we definitely appreciate whenever we get questions that it's definitely you've you've shown that you've done a little bit of research on your end. So it's 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 like that old adage of ask three and then me, you know, go to Google. So that basically means like seek out three ways of doing something before going to someone else for help um, just to like have a more informed way of looking at things. So Hope that makes sense. But being able to being able to ask good questions will get you so far in this hobby, and it will make a lot of people so much happier with you. Because anytime I get a question where they say, "How did you make that costume?" I'm like, I just kind of like freeze. I'm like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> like, I don't know how I did it. So, all right, back to this. Okay, so let me see. So we've got everything listed out here. And I actually, as I was talking, remembered that I, I forgot something. And that is after the entire helmet is painted, we need to weather the helmet. And that just means to, you know, roughen it up, make it look more in universe with Star Wars and all nice and grind, grungy and grimy. Okay. So we've got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Okay, so we've got 21 individual steps here. And the here's the thing. If you want to, you can break these steps down even more. Steps down even more. And I'm not I'm not going to do that now because I am already kind of like running over. But this is where I kind of this is where I'm able to implement time management strategies. So, I don't necessarily I don't know, I don't have a picture of it right now, but I have a system in my basement of three signs and they're similar to this board over here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to try and not overwhelm you too much, but let's see if, <laughs> let me see if I've got create a new board. All right. So the program that I'm in here, 
This is called Trello. And if you've heard me or if you've seen me talk about my cosplay Kanban board or you've seen the three frames that I have in my uh, cosplay room that say to do, in progress, and done, that's what that is. So a Kanban board is used in software development. It's used in like agile and all that fun stuff. And I have not been in the agile sphere for like years. So some of my terminology may be off base, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes. But the what I like using a Kanban board for is being able to take tasks and see where they are in the lifespan of working on a project. So let me show you a really brief or let me show you a really quick board. So let's see, got a to do in progress list and then done. So now where this comes into play is, can I get both of these on one screen? Let me see if I can do that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it though, because I have it Oh, I have OBS weird. Okay, I'm going to pull this out over here. Okay, so I have on my screen, I want to see if I, hold on, I'm sorry, guys. I want to see if I can get the other thing up here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is what happens when you do it on the fly. I don't need two of it. All right, I can't do it. Yes, you, oh no, I deleted the wrong one. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Where did that go? I'm back, okay. <laughs> All right, anyways, so the, so this list that we had right here of all of the tasks, what we're going to do is, so now, okay, so on the actual Trello board, I've got my three, I've got my three lists or boards, if you want to call them. So I've got a to-do list, an in-progress list, and a done list. And those lists mean exactly what I have right there. Anything underneath here is a item that we need to do. And anything under here, in progress, anything under here is done. So there are two ways that you could enter all this information in. So all of these, uh, all of these tasks that we need to complete under this helmet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, go down to here and say, add a card. And we're just going to put helmet on the card. Wait a minute. Did I do that right? I'm going crazy. I apologize, guys. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was like, why isn't it letting me do that? Okay. So under the to-do, we've got a new little card here that just says helmet. Now, if you right click on that little card here and you click open card, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can put in here. Now, this is where you can get super, you can get super like granular or you can keep it as simple as you want. So I'm showing you all this on a computer, but I actually do this with post-it notes. So, and the reason I do that is because with post-it notes on those boards, it's in my face. I can't just, I, it's not like a browser tab that I can just close out. It's always in my face, letting me know stuff that I need to do. So under this helmet card, this is basically our helmet project, if, if you want to get technical about it. So whenever I go into this helmet card here, Again, we've got all this space for stuff to put in here. This is where you can get real fancy. And if you want to, let me see if they have. All right. So what I would typically do is go down under checklist and you're going to just add basically a checklist of, let me see. I need to make sure I know how this is adding in here because this Trello is a little bit different than the last time I used it. Uh, I'm just going to write paint for right now. Oh, okay, cool. And what does this do? <laughs> That's an unfortunate spelling of something. <laughs> All right, delete. Leaving a checklist and there's no way to get it back. Wait. I'm, th this checklist 
is different than what I am used to. So let me see. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do or what I would tell you to do is under this um, tab, under this helmet, we would take all of these, we would take all of these steps and we would put it into our card. And I know that this is, Notion is weird about copying and pasting. Oh, of course I can't, yeah, I can't do them all. All right, so we would just create a checklist under here and I just put tasks. I think it's just, uh, that, I'm sorry, that tripped me up. It was just weird. It, you used to just be able to add like a, a box and you're, you were good with that. So under this task list here, I'm just going to put all of our tasks that we have identified. And this is where I said you can get as granular as you want because you could, I, I personally like to have I would personally say put all of your tasks into one of these cards because if you the other way to do it is you could make you could make a card for every single step here and have it linked back to your helmet you know project but you'll find that your your board is going to get super cluttered super fast and I'm going to go back to a one of my older boards just to kind of give you a more clear idea of what I'm going for with this whole, like being able to see where everything is. So here's Liara. I had everything planned. I had everything basically, you know, ready to go to work on this. But um, as you can see, I had all these like due dates and everything. It didn't get done. But so under here, let me show you, this is a good example. So I had different I had different silos on here. I had things to work on, which is essentially just a to-do list. On deck is stuff that I was preparing to work on. Um, like base so for example, something that was on deck would be like, oh, I'm printing the chest armor or I'm, you know, patterning it or something. And then the currently working on would be stuff that I was currently working on. And then I only had a few things complete over here. I had the headpiece and stuff like that. So let me kind of so essentially, I haven't even really like shown you like the the science of all the, not the science the the stuff of all this board, but um, the 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 reason that I like doing this for time management is it's it's visual. I can see okay, I have a lot of stuff I need to work on over here. I have a lot of things to do, and this is why earlier on I asked okay. Do you know where you want to, or do you know when you want to have this costume done, done by? Because yes, this looks like a lot to do, but if you have given yourself enough time from, you know, the inception of you wanting to make the costume and, you know, your convention, you in theory should be fine. So if you have, you know, it's going to take you a while to figure out just how long things take for you to actually work on or to actually finish. Um, but yeah, so it's just something to be aware of. So again, we've got a ton of stuff to work on over here with Liara. And this is where if I'm in the swing of working on Liara and let's say like tonight, okay, after I get off of this, after I get off of this live stream, I've got like two hours to myself tonight. I know I can work on something in two hours. I would go over to either my things to work on or the on deck. These are essentially serving the same purpose, um, but it just kind of helped me to silo things further by having it over here. But I would essentially say, okay, what do I have on my list over here that I think I can get done in, in two hours? So let me look at the chest armor here. And as you can see, I have I have a checklist under here of all the things that I need to do for the chest armor on Liara to Sony. So I've got I've got this task here saying pattern for my old arm ugh, pattern from the old armor. Excuse me. I, I had already made this set of armor for um, my Commander Shepard, so I was going to pattern a lot of stuff off of that. And then I, so in theory, I could, that's something that I could get done. I could, you know, I could spend 30 minutes, an hour, get that done. 
And that's really where the like the meat of this whole system comes from is whenever you're looking at so like whenever you look at this um card itself the chest armor card you're like oh my god that's a lot of work i can't get anything done on the chest armor what are you talking about i only have two hours but then you come in here and you break it down and it's like oh okay i i can definitely get the patterning done tonight you know that that's not going to take me too long and it's it's just breaking things down into digestible tasks and actionable things that you can do instead of just sitting in the overwhelm that I get tend to get into and it just really helps whenever because it, it just really helps to plan out things like this so whenever you are in a creative like mood and you want to work on something but you just don't know where to put that energy this kind of tells me like oh okay I can do this this is something quick I can do tonight so and then in theory, what would happen is, let's say like, okay, it, you know, a couple of days go by and I do everything, you know, blah, 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 and we get everything done. So let's pretend like we finished everything. And while we're working on it, we would put it in this currently working on field. And this also gives us an idea of how much bandwidth we have to work on other stuff. So again, for example, I am, let's say I'm working on the chest armor this week. I know that that is fairly, that's a, f a fair amount of work that I need to get done. Um, I would actually say that all of this, um, it's actually only these four tasks that I would really need to do. Because another thing that you can do once you recognize what pieces of your costume are similar, and what I mean in that way excuse me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is, so I need to prime paint and attach elastics to this armor. Well, I'm going to need to do that for all of this over here. I'm going to need to paint all of these things. I'm going to need to do all that stuff. So it makes a lot of sense to get this chest armor to like the priming stage or, you know, get, the, get it to like the plasti dipping stage and then kind of sit on it. And then whenever you have maybe a couple more pieces of armor, you could then paint them all at the same time. Because I know from my personal experience, like I would much rather have, I would much rather have like all of my armor finished and ready to paint so that I'm only getting out my paint one time or I'm only getting out my airbrush one time. I only have to clean it once um, and getting it done that way. So and again, and you can totally go the opposite way. If you want to, you know, get every single singular piece done before you move on to the second one, that's totally fine. But you're going to have to work that into your overall schedule. Um, so let's see. And then again, let's pretend like the chest armor is done. So you would put it over into the complete pile. And it it's just a very, it's just a very nice visual way of seeing all the stuff that you've got to do. And again, being able to take those tasks and use them. Like it, it, the thing is, I, I wanted to start off this live stream basically saying like, I love planning to the fact that I almost over plan. I get stuck in the planning phase because I like it so much. And because when you're planning it, you are not like, you haven't started working on it and you haven't experienced like hangups and failures and stuff like that that's going to hang you up. Right now, you're in like a controlled environment and nothing can go wrong. Nothing can touch you. Um, but it is very important to remember that you're planning, you're planning this costume so that you actually make it and you, not so you can just kind of like romanticize or like dream about having the costume. You actually want to have actionable steps to get into that. So, and to go back to the previous list of Bo-Katan. I'm sorry to go on a Liara tangent, but that was like the board that I had that kind of helped you get a better view of things. Um, excuse me. And I guess one more thing before I go back to Bo-Katan, but there are other things you can do with Trello. You can set deadlines. Um, like I said, I had a deadline of August 27th didn't happen. It was overdue and it, I had no idea whenever it's going to get done. So you can also... 
and this is a really good thing to do too, you can also label like specific pieces of your or specific tasks of your cosplay. You could say like, okay, this is going to be foam work. All these green things over here, these are foam work. So I know that, you know, again, if I have two hours to kill, I could take two of these and know that, okay, I can pattern the shin armor and I can pattern the knee armor tonight, you know, excuse me. And it's just really, it's, it's good to have, um, it's good to have like things grouped together like that. So, you know, especially if your costume requires you to do stuff like armor making and then also sewing and just different mediums, it's kind of nice to like group all those together. So we, well, I'm trying to, um, explain a cosplay Kanban board, <laughs> not really sure how, how well that went over, but that is like the, the basis of that system. And again, like I said, I keep, I'm sorry, I keep switching back and forth, but, um, so that, that is doing that within Trello and I highly recommend Trello. There are other similar Kanban systems. I believe monday.com maybe has something too. I would pick whatever really you prefer. Um, you could honestly, even if you wanted to, you could make something in Notion too. But for me personally, I really like to do the post-it notes on my board downstairs. Let me, you know what, let me actually pull that up. Do, do, do. I hope it, uh, hey, look, it's my live stream. <laughs> Why am I not? Okay. Uh, I know I did it in my cosplay room tour. Let me see if I can shush. Ah. Asana is another good one. Asana does um, Kanban boards. Oh, skip the ad. <laughs> Skipping the ad on my own YouTube video. I can't even do it. But yeah, I just want to give you a better visual of what I'm talking about with the post-it notes, but it's essentially the same thing as the Trello board, except everything is not like all nice and contained. Um, it's basically like a mess of post-it notes everywhere, but it's what works for me. It's, um, it, it, it's that, it's that whole idea of I'm down in my space and I need to get something done and I can look up at my board and say, Hey, oh, here we go. So I can look up at my board and say, okay, I need, like, it looks like I need to do like Mando's, I don't know, shoes or something. And I could pull that down and put it on my in progress board. So, um, this is kind of anticlimactic because I thought that I had, um, I thought I had post-it notes on this in the video, but I don't. So the, the top one up here is just that to do, that to do board and that's similar. And then in the middle one is in progress and then finished. So it's really, it's a very simple system whenever you think, like, you think about it. Um, it's just a way to make, it's just a way to make the tasks visual and make more sense, I guess. Um, but yeah. So let me see where we're at. So that is kind of the crux of it. Let me get back to Trello because that's a better visual. Do. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else other than that. But yeah, this. Um, let me check chat really quick. Sorry, guys. Oh, Notion does have a board view. Okay, that's good. I didn't know that. Hmm. Another important thing to keep in mind with obviously planning your cosplay is you want to try to the best of your ability to build in time to make mistakes. Um, and whenever I say make mistakes, I don't mean purposefully make mistakes. I'm talking about having like a buffer, like a buffer week or two between the end date of whatever you are wearing your costume for. So in the software development sphere, that is typically called a freeze week. We call that a code freeze week. It's basically where 
you know, code that it, basically we can't update the code or anything like that. And all changes have to be solidified by a certain date. So what that does is it gives the developers and everyone a two week buffer between the end of a, 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 a cycle and it going into production. And it gives them two weeks to kind of rectify any bugs or rectify any kind of loose ends that kind of, you know, f slip through the cracks, if, so to say. And I would recommend whenever you're starting, uh, like if this is your first costume, I would recommend, you know, <laughs> as much time as you possibly could to have like, it, it, you're, you're the best judgment of how, like how much work you want to put in, I guess I should say. Um, I don't want you guys to fall into the trap of con crunch. Like <laughs> I've, I'm not gonna lie. I've been there. I've done con crunch. I've made costumes in a month and it, you know, it's the worst thing Like, don't do that, <laughs> but it's like, I've done it, but planning your costumes out like this and having, you know, you can work on y y every week you work on something every day. Like you work on something little every day of the week, as opposed to, let's say like the weekend you binge and you do all of your work. Um, if that's, if that's your style, more power to you, you can do that. But I have found the most success in keeping my head above water whenever I plan out my costumes like this and I can just kind of pick at something every day that I have as opposed to just like, you know, doing the, those five or six hours of, you know, really intense crafting. And don't be wrong, those are great too, but the the best thing with like planning a cosplay and you know getting it to the finish line is really going to be like sustainability and um consistency and showing up um it's just for me personally it's just that's just a lot easier for me it's a lot e it's di more digestible for me to do a little bit every day than you know oh my goodness, I haven't worked on this shin armor at all. What am I going to do at, you know, we're, we're like two weeks away from the convention. So, and one last thing I want to touch on, um, this is another, this is one, one of those things. It's again from like, I'm taking this from the software development world and it's called, they're, they're what we call sprints. And I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with uh, writing, like they're called writing sprints. Um, people on, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube do like study sprints and all that that really is, is you're committing to do a set amount of work in a set amount of time. So for example, with a sprint, um, in this context, uh, we would say, okay, oh, I have to actually explain. <laughs> I'm getting too ahead of myself, guys. Sorry. So I guess like long and short of it. Actually, I'm not going to I'm not going to go that that deep. That's actually going to be a little bit too more too confusing. It's really the the consistency of doing a little bit every day that will really get you there. I apologize. I, I was like thinking about them like that's that's too that's just like too in the weeds that I'm going to get down. But there is one last thing I do want to talk about and it is the matter of So how I talked about making space to like making sure you have a buffer before your convention or whatever you're going to be wearing your thing for. I would also, if you are able to, with your specific costume, look at things on your costume that you could go without at a convention. So what I'm talking about there is, so in the case of, in the case of um, Bo-Katan, I knew that there was just no way I was going to get every single thing done for Bo-Katan whenever I was working on Mando. And I kind of told myself, I was like, all right, I don't need a jetpack because the jetpack is, you know, on her back and I can get away with not having that because most people are going to be seeing me from the front. I'm okay with, you know, having a bare back. If someone gives me crap about it at a convention, I'll just be like, I, sorry, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's not worth my time. Another thing that I also didn't do, I did not make her headband and I did not have a wig and that is perfectly fine too because she wears a helmet and it's totally fine for you to have 
her helmet on without a wig and the headband thing. Like, people still knew I was Bo-Katan. It was totally fine. And I was okay walking around the convention without a wig and all that stuff on and just kind of being myself. So that was a compromise I made there. And also, um, one last thing was I... I, en- I ended up making the blasters, but one other thing that I did put on that list was um, I don't need the blasters. So it, I always like to tell people whenever you're planning a costume, you know, it's like in the beginning, you're like, oh, gung ho, and you really want to get everything done. And that's great. But I also like to keep um, let people know, like, you know, you may have decided on a convention that you want to wear this to, or you decided a thing you want to wear it to, but there's always going to be something else after that. And your costume doesn't necessarily need to be 100% finished for that convention for you to have fun. Um, Again, with Bo-Katan, I wore this to C2E2 and I didn't have a wig, didn't have a headband on, and I didn't have a jetpack. And you know what? Nobody cared. And if they did care, I don't care (laughs) because they didn't say it to my face and whatever. But uh, it's just something, you know, I, I don't want you to ever... I don't want you to be so excited about a project and you you planned it all out and you were so close to being finished and there was just like one thing that if if you know you didn't have it you you were like I can't wear this no one will know who I am. I would still say wear it. You know, it, as long as it's not something that you're going to be upset that you don't have like in pictures and stuff like that, you're still going to have fun. I have seen people in um uh, what are they called? The Imper- I've seen people in like Imperial surplus kits for clones and they're not painted. Like they are not painted at all. They're just, you know, lumbering around and, you know, plastic and some of it's not even trimmed all the way and they're having a great time. So obviously I want, you know, <laughs> the whole goal of this panel is I want you to be able to be more confident in planning and breaking down a costume, but also Remember, at the end of the day, if you've gotten, you know, 95% of the way there and you're you're just like, I don't know, I don't know, look at it, like, look at it truthfully and be like, w- am I still going to have fun? Like, then wear it to the convention. And the other thing is, is if, if you decided, look, I can't get this done for the convention, I'm, you know, I'm too overwhelmed, you know, things get in the way. That's the, that's the thing with planning too, is life throws us curveballs. I mean, I mean, just look at the last two years and all that stuff. And I'm currently going through stuff myself. It's like, you can plan till you're blue in the face, but sometimes things come up and you've kind of got to know that that's okay too. And you have to know when it's time to step away, I guess I should say, or time to decide I am not going to put my mental health ahead of, you know, going to a convention just to have a cosplay finished. Um, that's just kind of where it, what that would be my personal takeaway is <laughs> please don't kill yourself for a costume. Obviously, I we want you to get a costume out, but I it's just something that I, I just in the past couple of years, it's like I cannot I cannot in good faith tell you to con crunch the day before a convention just to be wearing a costume because you will be so tired and so exhausted and all that planning and all that stuff will be for naught. So there, even, even with the past two years and like conventions being canceled, there will always be another event. There'll always be something else. And for better or for worse, co- worse costumes are never finished. <laughs> so it, even in my case with my bo I don't have a, like, I don't have the jetpack. I still don't have the jetpack. It's okay. I will eventually have the jetpack and then it'll be great. And I will get amazing photos of the jetpack. But for now, I just make sure that whenever I'm in a picture that, you know, then again, I don't even really need to worry about it because it's, there, there's just like such a random angle that you would get to see ha- there not being nothing on my back. So hopefully that makes sense. But um, I think that's kind of it from me. I'm trying to think of other stuff in terms of planning. Because the the thing is, is I could, God, I could talk about this like forever because there's so many, there's so many ways to go about a build. I mean, and this is just one, this is just one build. And it's, I know I say this as it's, it's not an easy build, but it is definitely one of the, it's, it's definitely less complicated than Mandalorian, the Mandalorian was. So it's like, there's different gauges of how, like there's different, 
I mean, we, we all know that there's like different levels of costume and different amounts of stuff that we're willing to deal with. We don't have a, <laughs> listen, all right, I'm going to make my, I'm going to make myself big. Listen, <laughs> I tried to print that jetpack four times. It didn't work. I, I gave up. <laughs> so I ended up buying a resin cast from somebody and it just still hasn't come in. So I will have one eventually. I was just like, I can't, this, this stupid jetpack won't, do, it won't work. <laughs> but, but I hope that that was good. <laughs> it has been, it has been a while since I have been live. So I apologize for like spaciness, all that kind of stuff. And just eating on my words, but I really needed to do this for myself too, to get all this ready for the panel. And it's very clear that I need to edit down my talking because I've been going for almost an hour and a half and my panel is 45 minutes. So <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out like some things I can cut down on. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see, let me look over here. She had <laughs> you gave it away <laughs> oh my god i'm glad yours i'm glad you got yours out though and i'm glad yours uh, yours is going good geek geek building mine did not it's sad it's all right but yeah um i think that's it for me i'm starting to my throat's starting to hurt from talking too much <laughs> But this was fun. I If I have stuff to do like this um, in the future, I will definitely uh, let you guys know if I want to live stream it because honestly, this keeps me accountable because I had this, <laughs> I had this, um, I basically called it brain dumping. I, I basically said like, oh yeah, I'm going to brain dump for my panel in my, in my planner for like a month. And I was like, I'm never going to get it done unless I, <laughs> I was like, I'm either going to do it like the day before, which I don't want to do. And it's not to say that I'm not, I don't, I'm not like prepared or I, I'm not, you know, excited. It's just how I am. It's just like, I, I do things like the day before and yeah, so it's a good time. Yeah. What's up? What's your question? Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you so much, Corvo. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just not like I sometimes I'm just not sure if the rambling is making any kind of sense because <laughs> it sometimes feels like I'm just rambling. Oh, no, I almost clicked on something else. Let me see. I'm trying to think of other stuff that that I might have missed. But yeah, if you guys didn't have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them right now. And you were allowed to ask them before. I just was, yeah. <laughs> saber crafting. Do you mean like a lightsaber? Like lightsaber? I, because I do not, unfortunately. That is something that I am not, I'm honestly scared. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Um, the only ones I know of offhand are ultra sabers but i'm not even sure if ultra sabers is good anymore i feel like i feel like every time i look there's a new lightsaber company that's just like not great but yeah ultra sabers is the only one i'm familiar with maybe some other people know in the chat or i'm not sure if you're on discord or not but i am not entirely sure no um what's his name uh luke's lightsabers on TikTok, he might, he might be a good person to ask. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Gruz. <laughs> I'm definitely hoping to, um, cut this down. I don't, I don't want to say dumb it down. That's not what I mean. Um, make it more digestible because I was kind of bouncing all over the place, but yeah, I just kind of break things down and then go from there. <laughs> That's putting it simply, but but yeah, um, oh, sure. What's up? <laughs> Wait, this is all I want to do. I just want to mess around with myself. Wah. <laughs> um, so the, oh God, what was I? I was trying to print the jetpack and like 
November of last year. I, I don't remember the specifics of why it wasn't finishing. Um, I think it may, oh, wait, no. I think I may have had like a layer shifting issue. So one of my, one of my 3D printers is, I mean, they're both Creality machines, so they require a, a fair bit of maintenance because they are cheaper machines and you kind of just, you kind of have to pay, pay for that and keeping them maintained. And my Creality, the one machine, if I print at too high of a speed, it like, it just goes all wonky and I get layer shifting like no tomorrow. Um, so I think that was the problem. I had just kept having layer shifts and the print was taking too long. Like the print for some reason was taking like five days to finish and I just didn't have the time to work with it. So I just kind of like, I got frustrated and I was like, I'm done. I don't, I don't need a jetpack. I'm fine. And I ended up buying a resin cast because I was like, I just don't feel like dealing with it. <laughs> sometimes you just, sometimes you just have to walk away. <laughs> just be okay with that. Um, uh, Electum Sabers. Oh, okay. Yeah, Electrum Sabers. Yeah, I don't, I am not a good saber resource. So thank you for putting that in there, Mr. Grizz. I appreciate it. Alrighty, guys, I think I'm going to call it quits here. But thank you guys for showing up to this one. Again, I know it was a little bit, uh, I'm, wow, I'm like really bright. Sorry. <laughs> but it was a little bit rambly, a little bit, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. But I hope you guys have a good Thursday night. I almost said Friday night. It is not Friday. I wish it was Friday. It might be Friday for some of you. I don't know. <laughs> but I am going to go and reheat some pizza and go play some Kirby games on, on the couch. So <laughs> I will catch you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Wait, no. Wait. Bye. <laughs> I'm still here.